everyone, and welcome to Draft Dreams, an Inside the Birds presentation profiling NFL draft prospects chasing their big dreams. I'm your host, Andrew DiCecco, and with me today, one of the more versatile safeties in this draft class. That's right, he plays a little offense too, folks. University of Utah safety, Sione Vaki. Sione, thank you for spending some time with me today. How are you doing? Yes, sir, I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I have to ask, well, just to get this out there and clear it up, how do you pronounce, what's the correct pronunciation of your name? Uh, Sione Baki. There you go. Now it's on the record. <laughs> okay, so I have to ask you, your pro day was March 21st. So what have the past couple of weeks been like for you since then? Um, I don't just, not really just interviews, uh, talking with teams, talking with position coaches. And then uh, just same old stuff, working out and uh, trying to eat right. <laughs> Where have you been working out? I work out with uh, Dr. Skyler Main as well as Paula Fitness. Okay, very cool. Now, have you had any prospect visits in the in the interim there in the in those couple weeks? Uh, no, sir. Uh, we have a couple coming up next week. Cool. So, what sort of perspective has this whole process given you, Sione? Man, I would say that, you know, every little thing is being watched, man. You are you are being watched for, for every little thing you do, um, whether it be in the weight room, off the field, school. Um, and so it just teaches me to to continue to do everything right, to continue to be a good person and to, uh, um, you know, keep driving, keep uh, staying humbled and uh, keeping that grind on. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about your pro day. How sure. many teams were there? What was it like for you? What was the whole experience like? Did you go in there with certain goals? Oh, yes. I definitely went in there to show um, my versatility. Again, I want to show people that, you know, the film doesn't lie. Um, and then I wanted to just put on a little show. Um, we're we're at our home home stadium, man, so I wanted to feel at home. wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, everyone got, you know, the best showing of, of who I believe I am. Kind of showing my passion through all the position drills I did. I even did a little extra with you know, wide receiver drills. I didn't think, uh, I don't think a lot of teams expect me to do that. And then I also ended it off with some special teams that uh, punt, catching some punts. Oh, wow. So I have to ask, what's your take on the new kickoff rule? I I don't know. I kind of like it. Uh, it looks, it looks fun. It looks like we're, we're kind of giving up um, if we're the, we're the kickoff team. It looks like we're kind of giving up um, a little bit more yardage than we, than we want to. Um, just off of uh, some film uh, that I have watched um, on the new formations, but um, I know something new. So for those who don't know, you were a very accomplished running back at Liberty High School, and you also played some running back at Utah. Right. Did you do some running back drills at during pro day upon the request of certain teams? Yes, I did do some running back drills. Um, I, I believe it was about four drills around the same drills I did um, after the workout I had in Indy. Um, so yeah, I think those went pretty well. Now you don't have to name any specific teams, but there are, are there some teams out there that have an offensive plans for you in addition to your defensive duties? Yes, I would say that, uh, there are a handful of teams that see me more as an offensive threat than uh defensive. Where do you see yourself? Do you like defense? Do you prefer defense or offense? I'm trying to tell teams that it's not a textbook answer. I truly see myself as a football player that wherever they put me, um, I feel like I could be successful. But I do tell teams that, um, you know, when it comes to offense, I feel like it comes more naturally. Um, I played a lot more offense in my career than I have played defensively. Um, but I, I don't know, for, for some reason, defense brings more joy. So however, however you guys want to evaluate or, you know, take that, is, that's, all, that's all I got. You're a football player. That's what it is. <laughs> so I, I was I covered the Eagles and I understand that there was a representative from the Eagles that was at your pro day who sure. put you through your workout. But can you expand upon that? Um yeah, oh man, I wish I could remember his name. Don't was it was it Joe Casper? Was it? It he's could the, it, he's the safeties coach. Oh yeah, it was Joe, it was Joe then. So uh, what was the interaction like and how to, and you know can you kind of run me through what that what that whole gauntlet of drills was like for you? Um there was only two of us so uh a little bit of the tank was uh 
was taken out by those those defense drills. But I mean, um, he was Joe was real nice to us. Um, it won't be like that uh, coming up this this next May in the in LTA. So I appreciate Coach for for helping us out a little bit. I know we were running a little bit low at the positions, but um, it was cool. It was intense. Um, it was a it was a good glimpse of what teams and what. Uh, um, what the NFL is looking for as far as when it comes to the defensive position, as far as safety and corners in those what movements. Kind of, what kind of feedback did you get coming off that day? I, so from what I, from what I, from what I got, it was, you know, I put on, I put on a hell of a show. So, you know, I'm just take it for what they said and uh, just move on, you know, try not to get too satisfied, satisfied off of the pro day, but I do feel like, you know, I went out, went out there, was able to show my personality through, you know, every single movement that I was doing. Now, it's also my understanding that about six teams had you at the NFL Combine run through some running back drills on top of your defensive back drills, which you already did earlier in the day. What was it's, the Combine experience like for you? Uh, I mean, that was a dream come true, honestly. I mean, growing up, we were, you know, we were working out for this little dream. Um, of making it to D1 football and uh, it just so happened to be what we were working out we were watching the draft and uh, the combine going on in Indy and so being able to you know see that hard work come to fruition uh, it was just it was amazing to be able to just stand and be in presence of you know all these great athletes as well as you know all the all the NFL 32 teams um, watching you and just to be a part of it. Where were you training for the combine? I was training at BYU Oh, cool. Which, okay. Yeah, All it's right. not a pretty but if he was at his, uh, you know, I was working with Dr. Skyler Main before he was at BYU. Gotcha. And then to, uh, to you know, getting ready for, for the draft and for the combine, uh, that's where he was set up. So, I mean, we moved on. We still rep the, the Utah Utes, though. You know, we still I was going to ask you that. <laughs> yeah. What's BYU, you know, you shirt, you shorts, you know, whatever it is. I still got Utes, you know, in my heart. So, wherever I go, I'm always ripping the Utah Utes. By the way, I have to ask, I'm not exactly sure what the Utah, what the alumni camaraderie is, but the Eagles have someone who played there in Britton Covey, who, I, who I've talked to and gotten to know throughout the season. Has Do you, do you have any rapport with him? Have you gotten a chance to talk to him at all? Um, So, like, he does he does still work out with Dr. Scott Amain, kind of the same person I, I, I trained with uh, during the combine. And, um, I mean, he's a human joystick when it comes to, I mean, if Utah, you ask anyone on who has the greatest film in Utah, he's definitely up there, if not the best. Um, so definitely always got to love a, a lot of respect for, for Brent Covey um, and what he brings to the table. And then just for his size to be able to go out there and still, you know, having a real, a real strong career um, with the Eagles. I mean, I love the Eagles organization as well as what they're doing. He always talks highly about you guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, that would, that would be pretty cool to be able to learn under him if that if we can make that happen. Has he given you any advice on what to expect throughout this the rest of the, the month and, you know, in the foreseeable future? Yeah, I would say uh, every time I came into contact with him, it was real short, simple. You know, he doesn't want to, you know, be too specific on things on, like, trying to uh, mold you into someone, into what he thinks. But uh, he always keeps it simple as just, you know, keep your head down, keep working. And uh, just trusting the process and always put God first. So we all know that the combine, we all know what the testing looks like from a from a visual perspective. But if you could kind of peel the layers back of the onion, Sione, and tell us what the behind the scenes is, the poking and prodding, the testing, the long days that a lot of folks aren't privy to. Oh, it's, are you talking about like the medicals and things like that? Yeah, the medicals and, and meet oh. without, like that. The <laughs> yeah, no, I got a story like so the first day we came up, we were we were about to we were just going to do like three small events, which was like blood, uh, testing our blood, as well as um, getting like a quick body X-ray and things like that. And they were like, they were like, yeah, after these three things, then you're gonna, you know, then you guys have will have time to rest. You guys can rest for the rest of the day. And it's about nine o'clock right now. And so we get done with that, and we're like, shoot, we're gonna go back to the hotel, rest up, let our bodies chill. Uh, you know, before our combine day gets here and then all of a sudden I'm in I'm in the hospital waiting for another like five to six hours to be done. And I don't get done until like two thirty three o'clock. And so, uh, yeah, for people who don't know, going through that combine, you know, it's a it's a real it's a real hustle, man. Um, I feel like it's made that way to kind of see, um, you know, what you're made of and things like that. But luckily for me, 
you know, it wasn't always the easy upbringing. So uh, I feel like I handled it pretty well. There's a lot of folks out there that sort of refer to it as speed dating because you're talking to this team, then you're going to talk to that team. And it's like, you know, it's like minutes apart, five, 10 minutes apart. Oh, yeah, definitely going through the the informal process. Uh, the formal process is a little bit more structured. But mm -hmm. when you're when you're in that Lions, then uh, of those 32 teams downstairs, man, I mean, you can get pulled any any way. So uh, just be ready to just be on your toes. Really, that's it. So what was your overall takeaway of the of the NFL combine? Obviously, you went there with goals in mind. Do you feel like you like you hit that threshold? Um, definitely not. When it came to the 40, I definitely ran a slower 40 than uh, that I had I had hoped for. Um, and it was just it came down to just, you know, probably me just thinking about it too much or, you know, stressing over it, which, you know, I know running in a straight line isn't my strength. So I don't know why I was stressing over it so much. Um, but I know it's a big thing that teams like to look for. Um, but as far as everything else, when it came to, to drills, I, de I, I definitely felt like I was in my element. I showed coaches that I could, you know, being one of the bigger safeties had a little bit more weight on me that, you know, I could get in and out of breaks just as easily and I could flip my hips just as easily as well. So I kind of want to rewind a little bit because you have a really interesting story, Sione. How you got to Utah, you had a two-year church mission, and I wanted to kind of talk about that and hear your thought and hear your perspective on what that whole experience was like for you. Yeah, from through any hardship I've been through other than the mission, like I definitely feel like the mission was the top, top tier of my hardships. Now, it definitely bring me great joy. But, um, you know, being someone that's imperfect and trying to be a disciple and, you know, uh, go out and uh, trying to bring bring back Heavenly Father's fold and to represent such a perfect being is is a hard thing um, to do at such a young age, you know, just coming out of high school. Definitely didn't have all the knowledge I wish I had, um, you know. But um, going out and being able to serve people definitely showed me that, um, especially when I played with a team, that it's not about you. Um, it's about uplifting and um, benefiting those around you. Um, now, through that, you'll be able to be uplifted and blessed as well. But, you know, these blessings that you have, these talents that you have is not just for you. It's not just for you to, to boast about. It's to be able to help and uplift others that's that's powerful stuff so in terms of recruitment coming out of right. liberty high school in brentwood california sure. what were you what were you being recruited as a running back i know you played some slot wide receiver as well you played some defensive back what what was uh right. tell me about it walk me through it um i definitely thought i was getting um recruited for um slot receiver um because it was they went close there, I had went to a camp, um, and I should have known. I honestly should have known that. Um, I went through these. Um, sorry, it's all right. I went through three, these receiver drills, and then afterwards, Coach Galley had pulled me aside, and he had uh, did a simple drill of like just opening up forty fives. And right after that, I received the scholarship, and I should have known then that I was being recruited as a safety, but I didn't know. I still had my hopes up, even when it was like Utah had like this YouTube, this short clip of like. Um, their recruiting class, they had me up there and it was all slot receiver drill, like slot receiver film, like me just on offense. And so I'm like, you know, this is cool. I'm getting ready. You know, I'm going to go play offense. And boom, first day I got there and I was right in the Coach Scali's room watching safety film. And I'm just like, holy crap, was I, <laughs> was I wrong? Um, but I'm definitely super grateful um, for, you know, all the coaching staff, um, especially Coach Scali, man. Definitely wouldn't have wished it any other way. So you didn't get to Utah until uh, 2022, is that correct? Sir. So how did you go about balancing offense and defense? Obviously, defense was your priority, but you also were a factor offensively due to need last season. You scored five touchdowns. How did you go about I mean, spending time in the, in the defensive backs room, spending time with the running backs, and you caught some passes last season? What was right. it like? Um, I definitely learned how to take care – um, of my body, whether it be the hyperbaric chamber, um, the PMF machine, uh, Tom at U.S. Crowd Therapy. Shout out, Tom. Um, love his facility. Um, definitely got me right with the boots and things like that. And then also shout out Audrey in the in the training room as well as Twin Page um, and John, Daniel and Chris. Sorry. Um, but um, yeah, just just um, being able to to recover well. And then when it came to Coach Q, he was amazing at, at teaching it very simple. 
Um, he taught me like one read, which was just reading the, the front side defensive lineman, the first front side defensive lineman play side. And then he was like, after that, just, you know, be, be athlete, man, go make a play. And, uh, and I was so grateful for that because, you know, I didn't have to think as much. And then when it came to the offensive side, you know, it was kind of just, you know, go make mama proud. That's it. So your mom has special meaning to you. And is that, is that, would you classify that as your why, Sione? Oh, for sure. For sure. So I have, I think you froze up there for a second. So I have to ask, would you rather get an interception or would you rather score a touchdown <laughs> offensively? Hey, oh man, that's a really good way to put it. Um, I would say getting an interception. I would say getting an interception. Now, I don't know why I haven't. I spent most of my time on offense, but you know I've had many touchdowns. But there's just there's just nothing like getting a good old pick. You know, there's just something about like just saying that you know I'm in your head. You know, I'm smarter than the offensive guy, or just like you know, just all that hard work coming up to coming up to that. Watching your film, one thing that really stands out to me is your eye discipline. Your your ability to read the quarterback and anticipate what's going to happen. You're like the quarterback on the back end. Right. How did you go about refining those skills, knowing that you were doing a bunch of offensive things and you were, you know, it looked like last season the light really went off and you were able to, you were firing on all cylinders. Yeah, I, I think it came, you know, hand in hand with playing offense. Um, being on the offensive side, it kind of helped me see from the, op like put me back in the offensive perspective. And then when I, defensive side it kind of helped me because you know we're talking with Barnes what he's looking for in my route you know how he wants me to stem this player um how much space does he need me to have for him um to be able to lead me out or to you know throw me on the dot and then it, it helped me see what quarterbacks were looking for as well as you know alignment you know whether they're foot to foot with the quarterback or whether they're you know they're offset from the quarterback and uh things like that so playing on the offensive side really helped uh um, define my skills on the defensive side, being able to understand what the offense is looking for and where they're trying to attack. And so uh, what area of your game do you feel you made the biggest strides in from year one to year two? I would say I would say IQ, being able to see the field, uh, reading position down a distance and things like that. I would say those were my biggest um, improvements. Now, when it came to physicality and things like that, I feel like I had that. So the biggest improvement was probably um, just being able to see the whole field. You talk about physicality. What are your, what's your take on the hip drop rule now? And, and does that alter the way that you play the game? Yeah, I mean, it's just like, you like, no one's intentionally coming to hip drop you. I feel like, you know, like, it's something that just kind of plays out. Um, and it's definitely like, I mean, we say it all the time. We're, you know, we're the defense. This is the offensive, like, world. We're just living in it. Um, so, I don't know. I I, I kind of think it sucks. Because, you know, there's like, I feel like every year they're just hacking at the defense, you know, taking things away. Um, but, I mean, it goes to show that, you know, the best the best athletes are on the defensive side. Sorry to say it. Is there an area of your game that you have yet to tap into? Like, what do, what hasn't been shown to the world that you know that you can do, whether it be defensively or offensively? Yeah, I would say, um Coming back to Utah and our um, our motto um, is, you know, RSNB being relentless, smart, nasty ball hawks. And I feel like that B um, in RSNB being a ball hawk is something that hasn't been shown to its full potential. So I definitely, you know, want to get that out there that, you know, I could track the ball, I could hawk the ball down, things like that, getting interceptions and in like even turning them into pick sixes because from then on it's just, you know, that offensive side just kicks in. So I definitely want to show people that I'm I'm a better ball hawk than, uh, than what they think. Looking back, Sione, was there a moment that the light sort of went off for you where you said, I can play in the NFL? Um, yeah, I would say just towards coming towards the end of the, the 2023 season, um, looking back at where I came from, looking at all the all the work that I put in and then, you know, watching the film. And then being able to say that, uh, you know, I've kind of put a stamp on my game in all three phases. 
So I would say, I would say looking at that and then uh, just being able to believe in myself and having, you know, the abilities, I, I feel like I have, you know, the full skill set to play in the NFL. So I need you to revisit this play. This is the 2022 Pac-12 title Which, game. This play really stuck out to me. It was a fourth down play. USC is looking to put you guys away. They throw – you're matched up in the slot against Jordan Addison. Jordan Addison. They throw it They throw it your way. You break up the pass. How did you see that play from me, from your vision? Was that the – was that the one where – Caleb Williams, he breaks out the pocket and he throws like a low ball with uh, Jordan Addison kind of coming back from his 10. I think he was supposed to run a 10 yard in and then he sees Caleb Williams escaping and then it was kind of a low ball kind of come in and dive in. Yep, and that was the play. That was the play. Um, man, I feel like, I don't know, it's just, uh, you know, Coach Galley and them, they always, they always harp on, uh, you know, being physical and being able to reroute players. Um, and that's something we felt like we could do. Um, against these these kind of receivers. And so, uh, I don't know, just being able to stop vertical progression. And then, uh, I don't know, it was, a, it was a dream. It was a dream. It felt like a dream. I felt like, I was like, there's no way this ball's coming to me. And uh, although I could have, I felt like I could have picked it, it could have turned out a little bit better than just the pass breakup. But, uh, yeah, Coach Kelly called the right, called the right defense, I guess, um, in that, in that instance. So, uh I'm not just super grateful for the team effort. Had Muhammad, uh, Mahmoud, Muhammad right next to me, uh, being able to stay in his zone, uh, passing it off to him, and then uh, his communication of, uh, you know, Caleb getting out the pocket and then, uh, you know, just I guess I was in the right position. Yeah, that play turned the tides of that entire game and flipped the script. So I have to ask, I like asking defensive backs this, how do you personally go about refining your ball skills? Because that's something that, so for some, it's inherent, but others have to work at it. What's your approach to that? Um, get on the jug machine. Get with the receivers. Uh, I would say someone that I was really close to was uh, was um, uh, Devon Bailey. Um, shoot, great longer guy. Being going one on ones with him. I mean, uh, hopefully they don't show any of that film. Um, but uh, I would say uh, getting with the receivers, and then uh, just going being on the jug machine. Um, getting your hands prepped for that. And then uh, just, I would say film. Uh, I would say film. Something that was great was uh, we always had uh, a lot of defensive guys in the defensive room watching film. We had our captains like Cole Bishop, Corinne Reed running those those meetings and things like that. And just, uh, you know, seeing what their their strengths and their weaknesses are. You mentioned Cole. Do you, have you guys sort of leaned on each other through this process or are you kind of going your own way and doing your own thing? Yeah, for sure. Um, I would say me lean. I leaned a lot uh, more on Cole than he leaned on me. You know, coming in, Cole was already one of the vets um, in the room, and so uh, I mean, just just being with him is a uh, you know is a uh, is a true testament to being in the film room. Um, he's someone that Coach Scally loved. Coach Scally, you know, really questioned him in the in the film room because he was always questioning me or one of the other younger um, safeties because uh, you know. Cole kind of had the playbook down. I mean, most of our offensive plays, if Cole's there, he's probably calling out the, the offensive play before that even happens. How instrumental was the senior bowl for your pre-draft cycle? Um, I feel like it was I feel like it was big. Um, being able to go out there, play with the best of the best, with pads on. So we're playing real football, showing my physicality and versatility as far as as well as like my movement. I feel like a lot of people. You know, they kind of had an idea, but they, they've they never seen it in, in uh, real life, real time. And so for me to go out there and be able to to run a little bit of routes, run running back, and then to be on the strong safety side, um, and I think was um, a huge, um, a huge play for, for me and for, for other teams to, to see that. Do you feel you've checked off all the boxes that you sought out to when you started this whole process? Um. Right now we have a good feeling. Um, I don't know if I checked off every box, um, but I I definitely feel like, you know, most of the stones have been turned. Who do you lean on during these times? When let's say Cole's busy doing, going through his uh, situation and, you know, Utah's get you know, they have their football workouts. Who do you lean on during these times? Um, I definitely lean on my siblings, uh, my family members, but, someone else that I lean on um, 
like first and foremost is you know my heavenly father that he's my faith is is something that i lean on heavily because you know it's his plan that's that's coming into fruition it's not my plan um these talents are from him it's not it's not you know i didn't i didn't i didn't earn these on my own and so uh you know leaning on my heavenly father and understanding that you know there's a greater purpose for me other than football now like Troy Paul Miles said you know he loves life life is a part of football and so you know that's that's something that i try to keep in my head that you know i'm i'm so much more than a football player it's a little bit of an outside the box question but if you had to build an ideal safety whether it be iq foot speed ball skills what would it be oh man I would say so for you could pick multiple. You could pick multiple guys. Yeah, I would say IQ and just like God given, like talking to God, we're we're definitely gonna go Troy Palomalu. Um, when it comes to uh, dang, okay, when it comes to speaking to God and like just jumping over and like making those crazy plays, I would say Troy Palomalu. When it comes to like IQ film, like studying and things like that, I'll go like Ed Reed. Now they were both great IQ people, but I'll go Ed Reed and his range. And then if it go, if it, if we want to build, I would be like someone. I would say someone like Derwin James. I feel like he has a crazy build. And then physicality, I would go like shoot. We go like John Lynch or like. Ronnie Lot or something like that. Wow, that's a good pull right there. That, that's a uh, that's probably the best safety ever with that combination. <laughs> yeah, thanks. So, what, what would your ele- elevator pitch be to teams as to why they should invest a draft pick in you? Oh, I'm 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 a blink check. When it comes to, like I'm a Swiss Army knife on you know you're gonna get everything out of me um every day and you can you have the film to see me in all three phases of the game whether it be special teams whether it be offense and whether it be defense. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm all out there. There's there's no questions that, that you should have about me other than, you know, when we should get started. Um, but uh, other than that, I feel like, you know, everything is out there for, for, for coaches to see. And if they haven't seen it in person, then, you know, they should have came to Pro Day. Siona, have you given any thought to what it's going to feel like when you hear your name call on draft day? Um. True. I, I just a just a blessing. Um, I feel like you know this is something that I work towards. This is something that you know I've I've been working on for the past eight, you know, almost almost a decade now. And so it won't be as much of a joy for for uh, me because this is what I've been working on. This is the, this is what I know I want. Um, so this would be more like a business trip for me. But then uh, being able to see my family's face, to see um, my nieces and nephews, um, you know, enjoy that moment with me uh, will be everything that I ask for. And last question before we get out of here. How will you be spending draft weekend? I'll be here, home, Utah, uh, with with the family. Just got to have a regular kickback, probably barbecue, probably, you know, throwing some games and things like that and just sitting and waiting for that phone call. Awesome. Well, I really look forward to seeing what the future holds for you. You have a lot of ability, and I can't wait to see it on Sundays, man. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate Absol- it, man. A- absolutely. Well, that that's going to do it for this episode of Inside the Birds Draft Dreams. For Sione Vaki, I'm Andrew DiCecco. Thanks for watching Draft Dreams.